Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is Forgotten Myths and the Abstraction of Chaos. You see, each one of us has certain archetypes, certain symbols we're acknowledging. Your sense of self is made based on experiences you have gone through. Every moment has come to this moment and now you're here. Now from the initiation that is this novel moment of awareness, we look around and we see we're more than a body. So how are we more than a body? Since there's an aspect of body present, but there's an aspect of existential observance that is moving beyond it. We cannot ignore this. There's subtlety. When you look outside, it's objective. When I look within, it's subjective and it goes beyond. So there there's a way where man can touch himself. So if man is trying to touch himself, is an, if an individual thing is trying to find the collective thing, what do you think is going to happen? Existential dissolution into the transcendental knowing that you are within all that is. Keep this with you. Travel swiftly. For you see, there's many modalities of projection and reality goes just like a wind. There's been so many times I've heard the, the words of wisdom I needed, but I could not hear it because I was not tuned. What that means is your world is giving you one excuse to not act, but your world, the world within, is never giving you an excuse not to act. And you must recognize that your anger and hate are not internal. They are external projections, for they are considered based on a sense of self that is getting angry. The man who came up with ideas also came up with the blindfold. How well can you see? You see, we need to act uh, very uh, efficiently. What that means is consciousness is something that must be experientially gained. You don't go ask the spiritual man for spirituality. Rather, you look into his eyes and seek the same wonder. For the wonder will take you to your wonder. And if there's a wondrous world waiting, not one of form, but one of the observance of form. So think of ev how you have lived, but think of now being aware as the world to yourself. And this is, of course, on some level visu visually appealing, but on another level, nothing that is of a visual sense. It is the presence of the being beyond personality and it flows with the intuition that has brought you here and is also taking you where you need to be. You will confront many factors in regards to how fear has developed in your life. Fear is incapability. You are an able being for you give the capacity. You give the value of who you are. Get rid of stress, depression immediately. You look good. Now with that sense of goodness, do not just try to be a saint. Do not try to avoid being a sinner. Look at the both modalities. Look at thought and learn from it. Learn from how you're communicating, how your existential communication is now. Look at where your attention is and what your attention does not want. Wanting is an option of interacting in this world. What that means is you can go in this world wanting things, being lost in the desires that you cannot find, fulfilled, or you can pay attention to existence and begin to learn from the nature of your being, begin to learn from your baby steps. You forgot that someone else who picked you up when you fell was yourself, was your sense of consciousness, your sense of conscious being, your sense of conscious effort. For just like a seed, man knows where he's heading. And there is the mightiness of the forest to be seen. You see, novelty is a gift. Forgotten myths suggest the abstraction of how we look around and we see the greatest symbols living among us. When your greatest symbols are living among you, myth has become reality, and the minute you find it, you are the expression of reality. What that means is the potential of subjectivity has some relevance to objectivity, but it also stands alone. What that means is right, right, right as there is an objective sense of being, based on how you have considered an objective world to even be a sense of human consciousness, from a human individuality, you have given this human being an ability to walk in new ways, for you have chosen for it to walk in a certain way. You see, on some level, a self-aware being will wonder and think of this life being evolution, but if you look at it deeply, it is the evolution of the cosmos. And so you're a moment, and perhaps a string, weaved to an expanding universe. The fabric of this cosmos is one. The fabric of this cosmos is one to learn from, uh, from your image. And it is not just the image of how you look outside. Because at the end of the day, that moment where you have sat down, that moment when you're about to go to sleep, that moment when you've achieved something and you've done something, you sit down and you're like, I played with this life. And it played back and there was wonder found. And that is my eternal passage.
We are guided by many intentions, and many of these intentions are from our own ability to see. What that means is the minute uh, a slave saw himself to be a free man in his subjective mind, in his internal vision, even though he was chained, he knew something would not keep him in this cage. And so mystics have understood that not that we are slaves to the manifest world, even though it do, it chooses our face. We walk with our faces knowing into the embrace of man's greatest action. These are just words, but in these words, infinite mirrors lie. Find yourself beyond ideas that mask. For the heart of the being is the origination of serenity to even be allowed. Love is your greatest knowing and when your eyes have become the eyes of love, you will begin to remember. For you right now may think that you going into very great states of consciousness and multidimensionality, experience self, experience self exploration, multidimensionality is an impossibility. But you're forgetting the myth, and it was the myth of the able man. The mystics and the yogis did not forget this. The meditators of this world did not forget this. Those of sincere of heart, those who understood that it was life that woke him up, not man. For all ideas fade in the greatness of the dawn that you are. Aside from poetic value, align your intentions. Give yourself clarity and allow clarity to happen. Also recognize you're going on a mountain. Nothing is going to be the same. Your planning is just on one part of the mountain, but you got to choose how to climb each step and you got to feel the stones that you're holding on to now. Become very gentle and compassionate with thought and not just with thought, with your world. Begin to envision a world that is peaceful and you will begin to see people will look in your eyes and they will be there is something peaceful there. And they will see it is, it is how you sincerely lived as life, how natural expression was your voice. And there was never a word spoken by a man. For there was no recorder when the cosmos was recording all that is. Your moment is your experience and the fruition of the capability that is your greatest guidance. Solve the problem by seeing that you have always been the solution. And then man will have an ability to work with the abstraction of chaos by having completely acknowledged your order. It's like that moment experience comes when something opposes you in this life and you stand there and you realize you have transcendental effort. That even those beings who have not eaten for days, something keeps them up. Something makes them look at the stars and wonder of their state of being. And you will see, if you think life is cruel to you, you are blessed for your experience is being granted immediately. You do not have to just have an iron will, but you must immediately go through the alchemy to a golden awareness of reality, that which innately is found to be present. That means regardless of the shift in your physicality, you are present. And I would like to share a very <laughs> interesting story, a very beautiful Zen story, actually, and it's about this warlord. And this warlord seeing that he is the Lord that has brought such a war, war upon the world that he is of the dominion, he is controlling it. This warlord suddenly decides to kill a lot of monks. <laughs> so very random, you know, but he decides to kill all the monks and all the monks, most of them flee from the monasteries. And I think this is in Japan uh, back in the day. Anyways, uh, what happens is uh, all the monks are being killed and suddenly this general is going to another city and as he's going to another city, I'm sorry, this warlord is going to another city and as this warlord is going to another city, what, his general comes up to him and says, hey warlord, we have a problem. And the warlord says, what? And the general says, one of the monks has stood back. It's a senior monk and he's not leaving. You know, we told them we're going to kill him. And the warlord suddenly gets such an anger. And he tells the guy, didn't you tell him 
that you would completely destroy him? The warlord gets filled with rage and says, take me to this monk. And this warlord walks up to this monk and he tells the monk, he says, monk, get up, come here. And the monk just very gracefully stands up and walks. And he walks with such a calm that it's as if the whole army is envious of the gentleness of this being. And this being walks in front of the warlord. The warlord gets close to him and he's gripping his sword with such fury. And he says, don't you know who I am? I can have my sword in your stomach in an instant. The monk, smiling transcendentally, with the grace of eternity, whispers back into the warlord's ears and says, don't you know who I am? I can have your sword in my stomach in an instant. And he stands there with such peace, as if this being had confronted reality beyond <laughs> fear. He stood there standing there knowing and with basking in the sense of being untouchable. And this warlord realized that he had conquered nothing. And as the story ends, the moment has always begun. You as a being, as a human being, can just learn from the being aspect of yourself. And you always are. It's innately present. It's as if there's a foundation of existential being and intelligence that is you. And then there is the idea and the thinker and uh, uh, the pointing hands, you know, <laughs> the pointing fingers, you know. Allow yourself to observe this life gracefully and simply. You can really try to find complex methods, but you will see that when you sit down, uh, the truth is going to be simple. It's going to be a very clear and transparent aspect of how you are self-aware. And it's a very profound existential observance. And Mr. Within understands that this is beyond the sense of space and time and definitely beyond the sense of space and time of the linear modality that you have. So if we were to think of Terence McKenna's amazement of the shift in the experience of time when he, when he uh, became friends with the mushroom, we would see the experience of space and time is the aspect of the being, the intelligent cosmic existential experiencer, which originates time within itself. You see? Just like how you have to think about ideas, an aspect of you is originating you into manifestation, into form, manifestation formlessly, and it is a graceful existential observance, and your knowing of it will not be individual. That means it cannot be. You have to kind of observe this in how you are thinking and how thought is just thought, and words are just words, and names are just names, and sounds are just sounds. And silence and stillness hold all being. This life is working with you to develop you as it develops itself. You must learn from how you are aware of who you are and you will see don't expect a clean mirror just a polished mirror right away 
uh, the mirror is not polished as long as there is a sense of individual consciousness. But uh, what we're trying to do is to polish it in the way that we don't need a mirror anymore. It's like we're trying to look to polish the mirror until we can see ourselves. And once we see ourselves, we don't need the mirror anymore. And then you can be uh, simultaneously situated in a way where you are not doing anything, but all is being done within your moment. It's a very graceful sense of, uh, I guess, orientation uh, in space and time, beyond space and time, as the observer of space and time. It's a very unspeakable and graceful experience, perhaps as gentle as a butterfly with wings of chaos and order landing on your forehead. Work with yourself because the profoundity and the uniqueness of the experiences you've gone and design you have gone, no path is the same. Every being has the potential of reaching states of flow where it's your experience is just it's moving at an experiential level that there is no words and there is no hierarchy. And so it's perhaps as, as elegant as uh, uh, a mother's goodbye to their children who are moving abroad. It is silent in understanding, but it has great magnitude in action. For Within the truth of truths, clarity was a broken mirror. Much blessings and namaste.